Good evening. I'm going to share with you this evening an experience gained over 25 years as an entrepreneur, an Army officer, and a Canadian Special Operations Commander, where I was faced with repeatedly making tough decisions in tough environments where I did not have the benefit of all the information. But decisions still needed to be made, and the environment was highly complex. I've come to realize, after 25 years of working in those environments, that there is a trinity of conditions that exist, and those conditions, if harnessed and brought together, can help set conditions for you to achieve better outcomes for yourselves in your daily lives, in your team sports, or in your businesses when trying to solve for X. X could be those riddles within riddles, those small obstacles, issues or challenges that often lie and hide within weight within larger problems, within wicked problems that we try to resolve. Or the X factor, those situations that if not immediately addressed can turn a situation into another event that you did not wish to have happen to you. To put context to this trinity of conditions, I'm going to share one story among many that I had over my career in the special operations community and serving this great country of ours. As with most situations, we started with more questions than answers. But nevertheless, we had to get on with the task at hand. Our story starts on a warm August evening in Ottawa on a Friday evening, where the call came for myself and a very small team of men to deploy onto a humanitarian mission. We did not know that night when we were leaving Ottawa what we would find on the other end. But we knew when we got there, there would be people in harm's way, Canadians, friends and allies, who are looking for our assistance. As is often the case, when the men and women of the Canadian Forces deploy into a situation, they report to a civilian, a civilian boss. The situation was no different for us. We met our lady upon arrival, and she apprised us that there was an emerging humanitarian crisis developing deep within the contested zone the contested zone within an active war zone that we were deploying into. A contested zone that no one on my team, my small team, had ever been to or completely understood at that moment in time. But nevertheless, she had a challenge and she sought our help. And through the power of the triad, we got on with trying to solutioneer our way through the situation. The situation that we found ourselves in required us to go deep, as I mentioned earlier, into contested territory. We did not know at the time that we would be negotiating police checkpoints, military checkpoints, that relocated at random and at will and were manned by terrified young soldiers and policemen. We did not know that we'd be passing through contested areas where petty criminals were taking, taking advantage of the chaos, where insurgents hid behind corners and terrorists looked for targets of opportunity. Nevertheless, we pushed forward, understanding what needed to get done and to set the conditions for ultimate success. I'm sure none of you or few of you have been faced with those type of dilemmas in your lives or careers, but I'm here to tell you that most of you, I'm sure, have experienced situations in your lives where the situation was fuzzy, the path forward was not clear at the outset, but due to other imperatives, you simply had to get on with trying to solve the problem. We found ourselves in that situation today, and I'm going to walk you through now the Solutioners Triad. The first condition to the triad is the most obvious. It is confidence. It is confidence in yourself, confidence in your teammates, and confidence in your team. And not false confidence, not bravado, not overconfidence, and certainly not arrogance. It is confidence born of the mastery of those key core skills abilities and knowledge that you will need to address the situation at hand. Confidence is not made overnight. It is a journey, it's a lifelong journey. And along that journey, you can boundary push, you can experiment, you can fail forward. For the more tactile skills, you can develop deep muscle memory so that you are doing certain activities without having to think about them. You're just getting on with the task at hand. But most importantly, mastery of that knowledge skill or ability allows you to understand that what may work in one situation may utterly fail you in another if you're not smart about how you apply that skill and knowledge. In our story, despite having never worked together before, the four of us that deployed had confidence in each other, 
Despite not knowing our boss, not knowing where we were going, we had confidence in our abilities to get the job done, the job done when pressed. This confidence enabled us to think through and create a common understanding of our current situation. Confidence is the first element in the triad, and without confidence, nothing else is possible. The second element is readiness. And I think most of us understand readiness as a concept, that ability to put your talents and tools to bear immediately, correctly, and contextually appropriate. But I have seen many times in my career, and I'm sure you can share this view, very few rise to the occasion due to natural talents and abilities. Most, the vast majority, sink to their level of readiness. Readiness, again, and trust in your equipment and your personnel enables you to take control of the situation and bring your talents and tools to bear immediately. If you are ready and you believe that you're ready, it frees up cognitive space so that, again, with precious time, you can think through what that acceptable outcome is going to be. You can prioritize your tasks and understand what contingencies we need to put in place in case that task does not deliver as we expected. In our story, due to our readiness, we were able to rapidly engage and move down through the contested area and get into the situation where our boss could have a dialogue, hopefully, with the assembled masses. The third element of the triad is empowerment. And again, it is another element that must be put in place before you find yourself in a wicked situation. These are not conditions that can be put in place after you find yourself in the middle of a situation. Empowerment is truly about enabling those with the best, best vantage point to make the decision in a, timely con in a timely manner, to allow you to seize those fleeting opportunities. Exploit small successes regain lost initiative, and potentially create positive momentum. For empowerment to work in a team construct, you need to park your ego. You need to have the faith and trust in the judgment of your peers and colleagues. Because only through empowerment can you seize those opportunities and often tip the balance in your favor. In our story, because of empowerment, reinforced through readiness and confidence, we were able to turn a rapidly deteriorating situation into an acceptable outcome. Our boss delivered some sad news, some bad news to the assembled masses of over 3,000 people. And the bad actors within that congregation of 3,000 folks immediately started to riot. Only through empowerment, readiness, and confidence were we as a small team able to get off the X. We're able to reset ourselves to come back and set conditions for another day. We're able to outwit, outmaneuver, and outthink our adversaries along the way, getting ourselves back deep out of the contested zone so that we could set ourselves up for success the following days. We never rushed to failure, and we only moved as fast as we could think. We thought our way through the situation, never rushing to failure. I ask you to think about your own wicked challenges, and I'm not suggesting dire life and death situations we're faced with. Was the outcome not as you had anticipated? And if it was not, was it become you may not have had the mastery of those core skills, knowledge, or abilities that you needed in the, movement, uh, the moment to create the outcome you were looking for? Was it because you were not ready to employ those tools or talents when the opportunity arose for some reason? Or was it simply because the person with the best vantage point was not empowered to make a decision? I know in our situation on that day, we had those three conditions set, and a very small group of three men solved for many X's that day to allow us to set the conditions to come back and not only save hundreds, but thousands and rest them out of an emerging war zone. Thank you.